Hello guys and uh, welcome to this brand new video review of my first ever encounter with the Swiss made watch this uh, beautiful Gents Mido Baroncelli 2 in a 38mm gold plated case Mido is a company which was founded in 1918 its name comes from the Spanish Yo Mido which means I measure and they're currently located in the town of Le Locle which is in the heart of the Swiss Jura Mountains. So Mido is as Swiss as they get. They actually share the same backyard with Tissot. When uh, Mido was first created, they had in mind of uh, putting out watches which could stand the rigors of day-to-day -day use. And you can see that in their future collections. They also made very nice ladies models, uh, which you, you, you can see a couple of pictures of here. Uh, they really concentrated on the female part of their market and uh, rightfully doing so, I think, because uh, these were truly beautiful. And you can see this in their current collection as well. They ve have very nice ladies models. So guys out there, if you're looking for a watch for your girlfriend, your wife, check out Mido because uh, they have truly beautiful ladies models. Uh, some interesting facts about them that is that uh, in the 1920s uh, they made some models for, for the automotive uh, enthusiasts, I guess. Uh, you can see one here which was inspired by the grill of a Bugatti. Uh, they had this thing, I don't know, watches inspired by car grills, I guess. But uh, something really important in their company history is that uh, in 1930 they discovered that if you put cork that's right cork like the type of cork that you find in a wine bottle okay um, if you put cork in between the watch case and the crown and I'll show you a couple of pictures here and you chemically treat that cork you can get uh, a certain amount of water resistance. For example, there are uh, models which have uh, 100 meters water resi resistance. If you pull out the crown, you still had 50 meters of water resistance, which uh, you cannot really say about many watches. Uh, that is because of the cork, which is positioned between uh, the barrel of the crown and the case. This was used uh, in future models, and uh, the models which had the Aquadura technology said that on the case back. This one, I'm not sure if it has it, but it doesn't say anything on the case back. Their bestseller between 1930s and uh, 1950s was the uh, Multifort, which was the first anti-magnetic watch to feature a self-winding mechanism, and the uh, added factors such as uh, water and shock resistance. So it was uh, truly a watch which you could use on a regular day-to-day -day basis as the founder of Mido intended in 1918. The Multifort collection is also around in uh, recent times. I will attach a couple of pictures here. And it's uh, a beautiful one. They're elegant yet truly at the same time. You could uh, rock these with a suit or at the, or at the gym and you would feel awesome 100% of the time. Uh, they've made some interesting quartz models. Uh, they had the world timer, which uh, could tell time from different cities around the world, which is nice. And uh, also a very interesting, strange one. It was called the Mido Bodyguard. It was a um, ladies watch, which featured a 100 decibel alarm. So if a lady would be attacked on the street, she could trigger the alarm of her Mido Bodyguard and her attacker would be annoyed even more by the sound that the alarm makes so he could attack her better anyway uh, they came out with this interesting philosophy after they were adopted by the Swatch Group being inspired by architecture uh, for example the old dial which is one of their current models is inspired by the Colosseum and uh, they came out with a special edition of the Great Wall in 2012, which was inspired by the Great Wall of China. The Baroncelli collection, which was um, firstly introduced in 2006. Uh, Mido, as they say, is inspired by the timeless and sublime beauty of stringed instruments. 
and uh, you, you could probably see the simplicity and the beauty in this watch that we have over here. It's nothing too ostentatious. It's probably a perfect dress watch from an aesthetical point of view. But uh, we'll come to this later. Now, let's return to uh, the model that we have here today. As I uh, first said in the video review, this is the Gents 38mm gold-plated Baroncelli 2. This uh, is gold-plated using the process of PVD coating, which actually means physical vapor deposition, but we just call it gold-plated because it's easier for us to understand. This uh, has a lug width of 20 millimeters and a thickness of just a little bit over 9 millimeters, which is very nice for fitting under a shirt cuff. I will do a wrist shot at the end of the review. This has a sapphire crystal on the front and on the back of the watch. And the sapphire crystal on the front of the watch features a uh, AR coating on the underside and over the crystal which has its, up, its ups and downs, as uh, you can see using this light, the AR coating is excellent. I mean, you can only see a gold, a gold shadow of the, um, of the light. But, I don't know if you know this, but uh, sapphire crystal of course doesn't really scratch because it's sapphire. It's one of the uh, hardest materials that we use uh, today that we use today, but the AR coating which is positioned on top of the sapphire crystal actually develops scratches and I'll try to make my best so you could see these scratches on uh, on the sapphire here. I mean they're really thin I'm going to focus on this corner of the sapphire because uh, uh, the camera is not going, not going to focus on the reflections of the light really uh, but uh, it's something interesting to note and uh, an advantage to reviewing, uh, to reviewing a used watch. You can see how it stands up to the test of time. But if you want to buy a watch which has AR coating on uh, over the crystal, you might want to know that. My favorite thing uh, regarding this watch has to be its dial. It's, it has a uh, frost matted white finish to it with the only shine not really coming from the dial itself, but from the hour indices and from the watch hands. Simplicity and elegance are some of the words which come into mind when trying to review this model because when you just look at the dial, it only has what you only need in a dress watch these days. It has the company name, the hour markers, the date indicator, and the... Uh, of course, it tells you it's Swiss made because, well, it is Swiss made. And everything is put together really nicely. I mean, the attention to detail, the, the way that the hour markers are applied is just perfect. You, you, you can't really see a fold and the, in the way that these uh, things were applied. Everything is perfectly symmetrical, as it should be, I mean, at this price point. This watch was, um, I think, six hundred about 600 euros it was bought from uh, Joma shop but uh, you could find these I don't know at your local Swiss dealer or on the internet you can expect to pay anywhere in between 550 to I guess 800 euros for one of these uh, in a brand new condition of course also the uh, sizing of the watch is uh, very nice at 38 millimeters, I think uh, anyone ranging in between someone with a 6 inch wrist uh, to 8 inch wrist can uh, wear this model and uh, wear it proudly because it will not look awkward in any way. Um, also, its thickness uh, of just over 9 millimeters is perfect for fitting under a shirt cuff. Mido have also uh, fitted the case with the display case pack. You could see here the ETA 2824-2 ticking in nicely, the balance wheel over there. Also, Mido have done a little bit of decoration on the counterbalance, but uh, not really a, lo a lot of work on the movement because, well, the ETA 2824 is a very good workhorse movement. Mido are part of the Swatch group, so sourcing 
ETA movements uh, is no problem for them really. And servicing this watch will be probably a piece of cake for many watchmakers because uh, they probably know this movement very well. It's uh, as you probably know about the ETA2824, it has hacking and hand winding. I'm going to hand wind the watch so you can hear the hand winding mechanism. Very smooth feel to it. Also, it features hacking. I'm trying to. I'm going to try to stop the second hand on the 12 o'clock marker. Almost, almost, just by a second. Uh, something which is uh, a testament to the build quality of this watch and movement is the fact that when the crown is all the way pulled out, you don't really have any play or wobble in it, uh, which is probably normal at this price uh, point, but. I have encountered watches which do have crown wobble when it is all the way pulled out. And I'm looking at you, Mako USA. Okay, moving on. Also, you need to remember that uh, this is not a chronometer certified movement. Although Mido do offer chronometer certified movements on their watches. Beautiful. But the accuracy that I have measured on uh, this watch of minus 10 to minus 12 seconds per day is well awesome for this price point really and good value for money is uh, actually something which comes into mind when uh, thinking about uh, this model because well if you want a well let's say about 500 euros dress piece you're probably thinking about uh, the Tissot Visodate, the Tissot Le Loc uh, at a slightly smaller price range uh, the Seiko Sarb, or at a higher price point, the Seiko Brights. I don't know. The, of course, there are other models out there, out there. But um, let me tell you this: if you want something with a smaller case diameter and a uh, smaller thickness than the Tissot's, you should definitely check out the Baroncelli collection from uh, Mido. They don't only offer the yellow gold option with a frost white dial. They have all sorts of models on the website and uh, even this year they've introduced the um, Mido Baroncelli Heritage which has a very nice beautiful finishing on the dial. Uh, not white, it's a cream, creamy textured dial and the second hand is blue as you can see. This It's abs absolutely beautiful. I would love to get my hands on one of those. Also, uh, textured dials uh, are part of their other collections as well, like uh, the Sea Star, for example. Just wanted to show you guys the uh, final wrist shot of the Mido Baroncelli 2. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, this strap is not the original strap that the watch came with. This is an aftermarket strap, but the uh, deployment buckle is the original deployment buckle. It did see a lot of wear across the years. It's uh, very comfortable, its thickness is beautiful, uh, probably the watch strap is more intrusive than the watch head. And uh, well, great quality from uh, the Swiss brand, I am not, uh, I'm not disappointed by my first ever encounter with the Swiss made piece. I hope it won't be my last and uh, I'm looking forward to the next watches that I will review. Japanese, Chinese, Indian, Swiss, you name it. I'm gonna review it, I'm gonna enjoy it to bits. So, well, thank you guys for putting up to me one more time. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm uh, looking forward to the feedback that you will give me in the comments. Uh, give me likes, give me dislikes, whatever. Subscribe to my channel. And uh, well, stay tuned because more content will be available soon. Bye bye guys, have a great day.